the lawless, destructive riots shaking our nation. No, those are Kentucky fans. I'm sorry, after losing. <laughs> the lawless, no, I'm sorry, that's Michigan State fans after winning. The no, I'm sorry, that's a pumpkin festival gone awry. <laughs> Come on, those are just kids blowing off steam with good natured arson. Yeah, there you go. That's the worrisome, let's call it urban violence we were looking for. It has been a night of chaos, violence, lawlessness in Baltimore over the death of Freddie Gray. Right now, the National Guard is on the scene trying to restore peace. And as we said, all public schools are closed today. But, ah. <laughs> you know what? That's probably even the one time kids don't even want to hear the announcement schools are closed. Honey, no school. You have a riot day. <laughs> Just stay in your PJs and watch your favorite cartoons. Be preempted by footage of our neighborhood in flames. <laughs> yes, once again, the combination of an economically struggling inner city and the police force charged with keeping its citizens out of everyone else's view has combusted. Like Watts in Detroit in the 60s, Georgia in the 70s, Miami in the 80s, LA and St. Petersburg in the 90s. These cyclical eruptions appear like, like tragedy cicadas. Depressing in their similarity, predictability, and intractability. Or to put that another way. Hard to believe this is going on in a major American city right now. This is a scene that uh, a lot of us never anticipated seeing in a city like Baltimore. Hard to believe this is going on, as I keep saying, in a major American city. I don't remember seeing anything like this in the United States of America in a long time. leading a herd of Orthodox Jewish unicorns through a city street, that would be hard to believe. <laughs> this sh this sh happens all the time. <laughs> Ferguson was just a few months ago, and you were talking about it. It's hard for me to believe that in this day and age, 2014, so many years after Dr. Martin Luther King and the Civil Rights Movement, mm -hmm. we're seeing National Guard troops on the street to prevent this kind of violence in this day and age. It's something I didn't think we'd be seeing again. I am worried about you. Do I need to get Sandler to go over your house and just run by you every morning? Well, look, Blitzer may have been taken off guard, but certainly the mayor of Baltimore wouldn't be taken off guard. I've been in contact with our governor, and he has agreed, and, and I have requested, and he has agreed uh, to deploy the National Guard. When the mayor called me, uh, which, quite frankly, we were glad that she finally did, uh, is instantly we uh, signed the executive order. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> well, isn't the governor a little passive aggressive? <laughs> I mean, I was there all weekend uh, by the phone, but fine if she wants the city to burn. <laughs> Who am I? I'm just a simple governor with the executive authority to provide a standing army of reservists. <laughs> but I guess calling them out would not be uh, on fleek as the, uh, as the young people. They, you mother <laughs> you swore that that's a thing. I swore that on fleek was a thing. They swore to me. I said, on fleek? And they said, no, that's a thing. And I was like... I am gonna punt you mother That's... I know that's a thing. I know that's a thing. So the mayor was a little late with her emergency state declaring. When should she have done it? There is a state of emergency after a night of violence and chaos. Was Baltimore caught off guard? That call should have came in two or three days ago. Why was this not in place Saturday or Sunday when the situation began? Well, sure, no, they could have declared a state of emergency in Baltimore on Sunday, maybe Saturday, or maybe somewhere in the 1970s. <laughs> and this seems to indicate the issue in our city emergency alert systems. There appear to be only two points on the scale, normal, and on fire. <laughs> Even volcanoes have a four-step warning system. 
<laughs> then just go from clear skies to the floor is lava. <laughs> and clearly, Baltimore was belching smoke far before Saturday. Baltimore's poverty rate is nearly double the national average. The unemployment rate among young African-American men hovers around 30 percent. High school graduation rates for black males are devastatingly low. A lack of access to labor markets, health care, housing. It has chronic severe drug and crime issues. One of the highest violent crime rates in America. You know your city's <laughs> up when its last most successful employment program was casting extras for a television show about how up your city is. <laughs> and when getting arrested, and when getting arrested is one of your more reliably lucrative options. Since 2011, the city of Baltimore has paid out close to $6 million in court judgments or settlements to victims of police abuse. The police brutality lottery is now $6 million. <laughs> All you need is a broken taillight and a dream. <laughs> and to the police's defense, hey, it's true. <laughs> they paid out $6 million. I didn't make that up. <laughs> and by the way, to the police's defense, it's not really their job to fix the whole mess. This has been our response to communities asking for resources. Mm -hmm. Law enforcement has essentially become a surrogate for jobs, health care, uh, education, and all the things these communities need to be healthy. It's not sustainable. Maybe a more nuanced alert system could allow for more productive intervention beyond, you have 10 seconds to disperse. <laughs> or we can agree to keep ignoring the roots of how systemically, historically disenfranchised many African-American communities still are, only paying attention to them when we fear their periodic fiery ball of anger threatens to enter our airspace, like some kind of Alex Haley's comet. And once again, <laughs> breathing a blissful sigh of forgetful relief when it's another near miss.